We have all six of the expected draft picks up on the stage. When it came to the NFL draft, and I really didn't talk to too many teams, I didn't have no spokesman. As you remember, nobody knows Edwin James. All I had was the work I did on the field, and that's the beauty of it all. I wasn't the popular guy, and so in certain situations, I was just bait. Philadelphia Eagles, they just had me fly up there. I kind of sat on the curb, but it made the paper. Edwin James is in town. I was the guy who took players around at the Jets. Edwin was one of those guys, picked him up at the airport. He was hard not to like. It was definitely, at that time, between the gold teeth and the dreads, you know, there was a perception about him uh, through probably most of the buildings. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. They try to make him a thug. First, he come from the University of Miami. Add that to the fact he's from Florida, Markley, Florida, a place that they never heard of. So they just assume he, he got a, a drug dealing background. They, they just assume that some type of way he was gonna get in trouble. The Colts had no trouble at running back in 1998. 1998, I was drafted by the Colts. Marshall Falk was the starting running back. Marshall Falk finds a hole, jukes to the 40. You know, at the time, you got Marshall Falk, Marvin Harrison, figuring we could probably play together for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. We, we felt we were in good shape but soon found out that there were contractual impediments that uh, were a problem. The next thing you know, we're trading Marshall Falk to the Rams. Even the players were kind of wondering, what are we going to do to replace Marshall Falk, right? There was nobody on the depth chart that we were just going to promote. The, the fact that we had the fourth pick in the draft was a godsend. The press immediately said, well, OK, it's going to be Ricky Williams. Williams breaks a hole. Williams, hello, record book. I thought we were probably going to take Ricky Williams just because all the attention that he had gotten. Media, they were fixated on Ricky, not, not Edger. Six of the best players are here in New York. I was back in the Markley. It was bigger than just me getting selected. You know, this is for the whole area. We're all together. We don't know what's going to happen. No question, Chris, when you look at the top five, Ricky Williams, number one player overall. Despite the rankings, the top three picks of the 1999 draft were all quarterbacks. This, you would think, with Indianapolis, may be the spot for a running back. You would think it would be Ricky Williams. Out of nowhere, I get this phone call, and everything takes off from there. With the uh, fourth choice in this draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Edgerin James, running back, University of Miami. The only thing I asked, and I said, can I stay here for the rest of the day? On the radio, they announced that the Colts had just drafted Edgerin James. These disc jockeys were having a field day with it. You know, you know who is Edgerin James? You know, Bill Polian's lost his mind. This is why the Colts stink. The public relations director came in and said, this is an exceedingly unpopular pick. We're getting telephone calls about it. And the local columnists got on me pretty good. Now, is there a need to justify this pick to your fans? Well, I don't think so. I don't know how you can justify it other than what happens on the field. Uh, talk is cheap. What happens in the fall is what counts. When Adrian came, you know, right away, I can just tell that, you know, the type of work ethic that he had, and then he had the, the Miami uh, swagger with him. He had a very unique look with the dreads and the gold teeth, but that's not what jumped out to me. What jumped out to me was his confidence. He didn't say a lot, but the way he carried himself, the way he went about his business in the weight room, on the field. You saw early, this guy was a little bit different. Edgerin James entered the NFL as a father to daughter Quisha with his childhood girlfriend, Andia Wilson. He was 20 years old, but he was extremely wise. He wanted to find out what's the most amount of money that I can possibly make. So we told him, well, you're gonna have to kind of bet on yourself a little bit. So we're gonna have to take a little bit of a haircut on the signing bonus but we could put in some incentives that if you reach them, will make you the highest paid rookie ever. So his contract had incentives in it. So I think the first one was 700 yards rushing. If he would hit 700 yards rushing, he'd get X amount of dollars. So it started at 700, then it went to 1,000, then 1,250, then 1,500 yards rushing. Great change of direction, innate skills and instinct. He has power. Edger and James is as complete a running back as we've seen coming to this league in quite some time. You know, he was on a mission. Now, maybe that's how he played all his life, where he was like that in Miami, but 
When he came, he, he was serious. I'm not going to break down. I'm not going to come out the game. I'm going to give it to you. First down, second down, third down. No trouble there. He powered his way in. Mind you, I'm coming from nothing. So when I got his signing bonus, I'm going to be good regardless. But the incentives, I really didn't understand how hard it was going to be. And so I broke everything down. I created this chart, and I would say, OK, week one, all the way through 16, I would have everything that I have, everything I need. And after every game, as soon as the game over, I'm plugging in. This is what I need. Manning gives it edge, returns the corner to the 40, looks for a block, down to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 25, breaks it back into the 20, down to the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, touchdown! The greatest compliment I could pay Adrian was I'd hand off to him. I was supposed to carry out my faith the other way, and I'd hand off and watch. And my coach would be like, you got to carry out your faith. I'm like, you understand I have the greatest view of what this guy is doing? Like, I want to I watch him make this safety miss or run over this linebacker. I remember he had a great run against the Giants, dragging guys down the sideline. There goes the rookie to midfield. Seahorn drags him down. No, he doesn't. He's still on his feet. Made a great one-handed catch against Washington. He's got it! What a catch! Touchdown! He kind of showed you that uh, he can do more than just run the ball. Goes to Edron James. Beauty. James slips a tackle and is in for the touchdown. Edge had 2,139 yards from scrimmage his first year, only 73 yards behind Eric Dickerson's record for the highest total by a rookie in NFL history. He reached every single escalator there was in that contract in his rookie year, every single one. He was the first rookie to lead the NFL in rushing in 16 seasons and helped the Colts to their most wins in 31 years. The Colts have won the AFC East. My rookie year, we exceeded so many expectations. I developed a great relationship with Peyton, great relationship with Marv, and we did things that everybody didn't expect, and we weren't prepared for the playoffs. Indianapolis lost to Tennessee in their first game of the 1999 playoffs, a pattern that would continue for James and the Colts for years. <laughs> 